Hello everyone, and welcome to Wizzo Talk. Why Wizzo Talk? Shit, because I want to know, don't you? Here at Wizzo Talk, I play like you said, uncut and unedited. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the hot talks yet to come. Like to be a guest on the show? Hit me up in the comments. You have a hot topic you like to hear discussed? Also, hit me up in the comments. Always remember that it is also free to like, share, and subscribe. We're going to meet our guests, and then we're going to set this thing off and get it going. So y'all stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. Yo, much bliss to everybody out there, man. It's an honor to be on the Wizzle Talk yet again. It's your boy, Seven Points of Bliss, a.k.a. Pomegranate Samurai. And, uh, man, let's get to it, man. All right, all right. All right, and it's Michael Zucatus, and I'm a good friend of Paul's, and I uh, just want to uh, join him today and talk about uh, everybody's opinions on assault weapons. All right, all right, cool. All right. Cool. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, guys. We got assault weapons. However, when I just uploaded a um, a short video just the other day, one guy told me, he said, it's no such thing as assault weapons. He said, that's the politic term for it. Mm -hmm. So, I, in other words, so now y'all help me out. So what should I label this or how should I name this topic if I can't say assault weapons? That's a, but we're not politicians, most of us are not or whatever. So so what what's what's give me help me out with a topic, what should we say? Well, that's a good one. What is an assault weapon? Okay. All right. I mean, you know, and and then and what you uploaded is is correct. Okay. When people say we shouldn't be buying assault weapons, well we can't. Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that's why we kind of going with this, guys. And then my thing is, I already didn't talk, reach out to you guys. I know how y'all kind of feel about assault, uh, assault weapons or high magazine weapons or stuff like that. And I have my own opinion of it. And I've always wanted to own one, but I don't even know why the fuck I wanted to own it, I think, just because. But the thing to get me is when you say it's to someone... Um, you know, when the government or, or politicians are trying to put a ban on assault weapons, someone always say it's uh, it's violating their Second Amendment right. Mm -hmm. And to me, I just, I don't know how you guys feel, but to me, I say this fucking mm -hmm. bullshit. Because you, it's not saying that you can't carry a firearm. What mm -hmm. they're talking about are assault weapons, high magazines. And I think they're saying that they're doing it because all of the shootings that's going on. So I don't know, but it, it kind of reminds me of when people say that, it kind of, and this is my own opinion, when people use the Bible for certain things they want to use it for, picking out this verse or picking out that verse. So either you live by the whole fucking Constitution or you live by the whole fucking Bible or you just don't. So that's just kind of where I feel when I ask somebody, I might say, well, Josh, you shouldn't own no uh, high magazine uh automatic weapon or whatever the fuck they call it. Mm -hmm. And you might say, I'm not saying this is what you're saying, I'm just using no, an example. Saying. And you might say, well, it violates my second amendment right. I'm not saying you can't carry a fucking gun because you still can. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, I'm just kind of, that just kind of opens up to get us going, to get us talking. And I also want to touch on, should, if you have domestic violence, should you be able to purchase a weapon, period? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to also talk about that and also just touch on that Texas out of, is in the top 10. Matter of fact, they're number two in mass shootings that's going on right here. Oh, really? Yes. And my wow. last thing that I want to touch on on that was several little notes I have, but um, just slipped my goddamn mind. But anyway, that just threw something out there right now. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, let's go with it. I'll look at my notes and find that other shit. Anybody take off? Well, I, I personally, I want to say um, when you're looking at things in that in that nature, whether it's a gun or like you said, the Bible, it really depends on the mental state of the person using anything. Anything can be a weapon. You know what I mean? Because people have used the Bible as a weapon in the past, mm -hmm. and they people can really use anything. It's really how you're manipulating the people. Like um, you said, that guy has said the assault weapon. There's no such thing as an assault weapon. It's really about how you're using these things. You know what I mean? And a lot of the people who've been doing these shootings have had mental issues. I don't think that um, the government really takes in consideration people's mm -hmm. mental states when they're buying things, and that's they need a. Um, a more detailed way of giving people mental assessments before 
they buy these things because when you go get one, you can easily answer all the questions the right way. Right. And still not be in the right mental state to uh, purchase said mm -hmm. item. Right. Right. You got something on that? Yeah. Um, he's right. Um, the, the the core of the issue isn't the the weapon being used. Mm. It, it is the mental state or... or in the society, and that's what there's not. Instead of focusing and trying to address and do legislation to address that, they're they're addressing this one, and and they tend to only pick out very specific guns. So we look at more people die from handguns in a year than than they do from that the AR-15, which mm -hmm. you know, and that's the misconception. AR assault rifle that is not what that means. Mm -hmm. The AR represents a company that made it, which is Amorite. And that's what the AR means. Okay. So, um, but that's the thing. It, it's when they pick out just the one gun and just this style of gun. Well, that one looks scary, but that gun is no different than a 22, pretty much ballistically. Just a little bit better ballistics. But you got a 22. It's the same gun. It just does. It doesn't dress the same way. And so. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, just to touch on, I be forgetting where the fuck I'm going sometimes because there's so much up there turning around. But just to touch on a mental uh, issue, mm -hmm. um, and this is just me, I don't see how a mother could be mentally ill when they didn't written down the escape plan, how they going to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. They have written down uh, the plan of attack. You know, they have planned everything out. To me, that's not saying someone is mentally ill if they didn't plan out Every fucking day, they even planned out pretty much at what point they're going to shoot themselves. Mm. You know, now you may think people are crazy because they shoot themselves. People do that all the time. You know, so just that right there, and y'all can come back to that on that mentally ill part. And then on the the assault weapon or the twenty two. Back when I was coming up, I wanted a fucking shotgun. Mm -hmm. That was it. You know, they wasn't making these type of weapons like that then. You know, when I was coming up, or if they were, there was very limited supply of them. I just wanted a shotgun, wanted a pump. But now, and I said this on another podcast before, if you go up into the store, that 18-year-old kid is not going to buy or purchase a uh, shotgun because he can purchase this AR or right. assault weapon mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that. He's not going to purchase that because, you know, they and I'm just saying this here. I'm not. I'm not opposed to the AR, and I wouldn't have never know what the name of that shit like unless I Google it, whatever. Because mm -hmm. some people just don't, whatever. So that was cool that you broke that down with the name. But I'm not opposed to it because I think as we as men, we like our toys. Like, so, and I think that's kind of what it is. It's like a little toy that we just want to have at my mm -hmm. market. Just like some of us with our old guns, mm -hmm. old cars, and so forth and so on, like that. But. So I'm not opposed to it. The only thing that I would say is, why come the government can't raise the age to like 30 if we see that the mass shootings are going on between 18 and say 25? I hadn't researched that. I'm just saying, I don't know. But I know at 18, you can buy a long gun, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you can buy a and, rifle. Yeah, you can buy a rifle. And I believe that you can on those too. I don't know. Or do you have to be 21? I, should, I don't I don't even know. They didn't. When I, I bought this, when I bought this AR, AR-12 back here, they didn't ask right. me. So right. I, you know what I'm saying? I they think did. you might be able to, but if not, the, people, the viewers can look at it and see. But what I'm saying is, why not raise the age? Because as soon as it, the there's a mass shooting, they're saying that person is mentally ill. Then they're going to see how did he purchase that weapon or she purchased because I think the last one was the when the lady, the kid shot out the window. So, all thing I'm saying, I'm not opposed to. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying why we can't raise the age. Because here in Texas, you got to be 18, you consider grown, but you can only buy, but in at 21, you can buy cigarettes. And then at 25, that's the only age where you can take a shit. And then at 26, you can't sit down and piss. You have to stand up. But that was just joking part. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that they change the age to whatever they want. Now, I know the, the NRA plays a big part in this. I know it's a big politic thing. Mike, I know where you stand on different politics. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think you kind of stand on where you stand. But my thing is, I always hear that the Republican Party are totally against anything with assault weapons or whatever. And you got the Democrats 
they're trying to uh, change it or ban them or something like that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just share them for a minute and let y'all kind of see what I was just talking about, about the mental and about the weapons or whatever and see where we're going from here. Well, when it comes to like what you were saying about uh, a person writing like a whole manifesto about yeah. how they're going to do everything like that, I, don't, I really like to think that that kind of puts you in a mental ill category just because you're really detailed with something doesn't mean you're not mentally ill. It's all about the purpose in which you're making those plans. Mm -hmm. So right. the fact that they even made those plans, like the, I guess it was the guy in Oklahoma, but he didn't even live in Oklahoma. I think he drove like 1,500 miles or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he went and did all that. It's like, man, what's the purpose of it? Right. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could write all this stuff down. You could be extremely detailed. Even back in the old school cartoons, like, the bad guys would be monologuing. And they'd be like, well, right. I had all these plans. And it's like, that makes them into ill because they were trying to destroy things. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that he wanted to kill himself at the end of it really signed something. But the, the thing that's dangerous when it comes to all this is the fact that you don't find this stuff out about that person until after it's after done. Yeah. It's not like right. he read it and then gave it to somebody. And that's time. the HEPA-laws, right? The doctor-client yeah. privilege. Yeah, you know, that's nobody's business that you're being treated for this. Exactly. You know, and nobody right. can ask. And there's warning signs ahead of time. Right. right. And and Jeffrey Dahmer didn't use a gun. Mm -hmm. But boy, right. he had detailed plants. Right. He, I mean, he had recipes. He so was cooking mean, them. Mm -hmm. Right. So does that mean <laughs> that, that he boy was cooked? Yeah, I mean, he was mentally ill. I mean, because he had the first piece had the plan. I guess. It I mean, I just. I think it depends. Um, also, your perspective of of the world and society itself, because you're gonna have people that it's good and evil. It's evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's an evil side to that. That you know. Um, so there's a morality involved issue involved too, and and so how do you how does that how did that person arrive at that state and get to a point now. To, to reflect back when you were coming up, when I was coming up, we all had rifles and shotguns in the backs of the trucks at the high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, nobody shot up anybody. But that but that was back in the day when people were taught to respect things. Right. right. Yeah. How to use a gun. So as an example with that, I raised my kids. They never once owned a toy gun. I didn't allow it okay. because guns aren't toys. Damn, that's, so, that's good right there. I never once. That's good. And their first gun was uh, one, a little Red Ryder BB gun. And it was the mini one, because they were tiny. Mm -hmm. And once they demonstrated full gun safety, like how they would carry it and how to hold it. So I moved on to progress and they would take them dove hunting with a youth shotgun. Right. Okay. So, and, that, and then all the guns I do own, handguns and rifles, my son is shot, knows how to shoot them. Mm -hmm. um, but he, that's how he was raised with. And so, and the reason I had him shoot them all throughout his life at some point was to feel the power a bit in it, first of mm -hmm. all, and then to see what it did at the other side. Right. Right. The destruction it can cause. Right. But he never, ever, because I said, you don't pretend to shoot people. Right. And that's like these video games. Yeah. They're I killing each other. Next, yeah. I was waiting on you to finish. Right. Yeah. So it's the same thing. And I mean, it's so it, again, it's how you're raised right. and, and, and to respect that or not it's just right. like respect you're raised to respect your parents you're raised to re you know right. guns, That's such guns a are good a right practice bro yeah. right? i didn't yeah. even i never even yeah. thought about that but well, as soon as you said that it went back to my childhood nerf guns water guns what's the first thing you shoot at a person's face you shoot yeah. at their eyes or something like you that you pretend like don't shoot in their face yeah, yeah. and you pretend like you're shooting cops right. and robbers whatever damn i got you you're dead it's a whole you know? mentality right mm -hmm. so are we saying that the companies Need to stop making these fucking toy guns. But the same company they... that the same companies that make the real guns make the toy guns. No, they don't need to stop making them. It's the it's up to the parent. Yep. To you, regulate. I don't need them to decide or or help me raise my kid. Right. You know, if if the parents raise their kid that way, they they they're not gonna make a bunch of them if they're not selling a right. bunch so, of them. <laughs> so we kind of saying you sound like you may be saying that. These people that's create this uh, doing these mass shootings wasn't raised properly by their parents. I'm sure if we dug into it, we'd find questionable things. Whether it be at an early age, at an early age, was the kid on this? Was the kid on that? Did they have this? Uh, you know, are they high functioning autism? I mean, you know, it's. I mean, I'm sure if you dig into it, it's just like the 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 uh, the trans one that went shot at the school. Mm -hmm. 
there's a whole history of stuff going on in that that mm-hmm. individual's right. life right. Uh, before they ever got to there. Okay. And this Dane is really like um, just like doing the from what you said about how you treated your son growing up and I know how you were worried about your children. Okay. I think uh, one of the most dangerous things that people don't pay attention to is not paying enough attention to their children. You know what I mean? Like and what they're doing. Like, yeah, give, not ignoring them, letting them go off on their own uh, devices and figuring things out on their own. You have to guide them. Just like what you were saying. Yeah. You know and that's saying? where social media becomes right. deadly. Right. Because they, they, they get pick up on ideology mm-hmm. all alone without and they don't come and say hey what does this guy say does this sound what, what is it and they they don't seek out a perspective and then they get fed and fed and then their algorithm sees they watched it and they get more and more and more and more of it. especially when it comes to the like you were saying the video games and mm-hmm. you're talking to all different types of people you don't know who's in your children's ear they're already shooting these guns and people right. talking about guns and you don't know the mentality of those people. It's already just about killing on those. They men. get mad at someone else on that video game, and then they mm-hmm. swat them right on their at their houses. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, and just to go back to you know, cause times are changing. Yeah. What I did as a kid, you guys didn't do, and uh, I, I think I'm older. I don't know shit. I think I am. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I mean, things are changing for my kids, or whatever and stuff like that. But my thing is, so now we don't have to purchase that water gun or that Nerf gun, but if I go by that damn tool of duty or call of duty, what's the difference? Seems like that's exactly. worse exactly. than this water gun because mm-hmm. like you just said, they shooting at the head and those things, when they shoot that AR at that video game's head and the blood and the splatter, mm-hmm. that's it's no connection. Yeah. You it's know, it's desensitation. So, yeah. It's desensitizing so, them to what it looks like to have that pull mass trigger. splatter. Yeah. yeah. So are we saying that I know you just said when I asked the question about should we just said they stop making the guns, you were saying it's up to the parents. So should we stop making the video games like that? Mm-hmm. Which we know they're not going to do. But then again, the that gives the parent the chance to control it. However, once the, they, they said that these mass shootings are taking place between 18 or whatever. So if I, you can't, you, I think your kid is 16, 17, 17 or something like that. So if he's out over at Johnny Walker's house, Hell, they own the game, but you don't know that. But mm-hmm. even though we taught him, don't do that or whatever, mm-hmm. but now he's seeing that somewhere else. So uh, my point is what what you don't teach him or you teaching him not to, somebody else is going to teach him to. You see what I'm saying? No, they're not teaching him to. You, what the biggest thing is you... <laughs> I think you have to be, have con- belief. I mean, you have to you have to know that you instilled enough that when they're mm-hmm. over there, mm-hmm. that, that what they that the, what they've been taught and learned and raised that they know they're going to be like, man, this isn't okay. Right. Now, Just you, like if you teach them not to bully, you know. I, my son has experience. We I've had experiences where he's at a school and he just was really upset that some people that were bullying someone mm-hmm. and he intervened because it ain't. He goes, man, it ain't right. You know, right. and and I went through that. I, he was in junior high at the time, and so I, I think it's just uh, when that's instilled in them. Okay, it, right, and I feel you on that. I feel what you're saying, and that instilled with them. And so, all of the kids are not mass shooters. It's that certain percent. Mm-hmm. So it's this certain percent that we instill in this into not to go and do that. But you still have that other percent that's doing whatever. Right. So. If the guns are not there, it's going to always be some type of killing, but the numbers Absolutely. are not going to be as great, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Because when him to bust off and bust off something with that nine, I remember when the Timber Police had 357s back in the day. Well, they got away from them because the bad guys had nine millimeters, so the cops didn't have enough bullets to keep up with the nines. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, I'm selling, uh, what's you call that motherfucking sniper rifle? 50 cal. Ooh. They selling that at the gun show. Yeah, you can they buy 50 cal. They selling ARs, and I don't know the names of all other weapons, right. but they selling all the ones with all... My point is, the so-called bad guys have more... Uh, they even selling bulletproof vests than the cops. I mean, they they're, they're, they have more weapons than the police do. I mean, is that because of their being sold? So, Why do we need them? You made a good point here in this. Um... Prohibition didn't work. Okay. We got alcohol during it. Okay. Right? It became an underground thing. So you got the highest 
highest crime, most deaths in the country is Chicago. Chicago has the most stringent gun laws. Mm -hmm. The most stringent. But yeah, guess what? All the bad guys don't give a damn about a law. Don't be yeah, right. So you said the bad guys have outnumbered. That's right. They do. And it don't matter what you take away. You're only hurting the law-abiding citizen when you, you do any gun bans. Mm -hmm. The only people are going to obey that are the people that don't, uh, you know, that don't abuse that that right. Right. And I feel you on that because I'm licensed to carry. So when I go into a a store and I see this sign saying 306 and 307, mm -hmm. you know, you can't bring your handgun or no handguns. Right. This guy over here, he don't, that's coming to do wrong this bad guy, he don't give a fuck about that he sign. He ain't even looking for that he sign. He don't even give a shit. But me, I get in trouble for it or, or get a fine and I'm licensed to carry because I bring it in there. And in some cases, you would want people like me in there right. for when all this shit is going on. But... I know you got some limits for because I be losing my shit. <laughs> and, uh, but then when you were saying something to the fact about Chicago and all that stuff in the weapons, I'm just saying we can still sell them. I'm just wanting the law to be changed to a higher age. Now, they got, they got the underground. They, they, they break it into pawn shops and they stealing them. But if you just saying that an 18-year-old can go in there and buy AK or AR or something like that, that's the only part that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm not saying don't stop selling them. Right. I'm just saying right. raise the age limit because the studies is showing from 18 to, I, I forgot, maybe 30, but 25. But grown men, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not really having that problem. We using them as a sport. I know one guy that has about like five. Mm -hmm. I don't even know sure. all the names of them. Sure. But they got suppressors. Why in the fuck you need a suppressor? Because it's loud. And you because can have one. You can have one. But they're why? cool. They're, <laughs> they're cool. fun. <laughs> they're fun. But that's just me. I yeah. And and, and fine <laughs> if you have that at thirty. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck did this eighteen year old kid can go there and buy that? That's my I, thing. I, I'm with you. I think if we raise the age group on that, we need to raise it on voting too. Because they ain't live long enough to make the right choices at 18 no, when they're voting. I agree with that, man. They typically are way more uh, wilder, and they don't have uh, good decision-making skills when they're so much younger. They're right. So, they're irrational. They're just going to go off their feelings. Mm -hmm. And when you get to be older, like what you were saying, um, you have a lot more that you're thinking about. You know what I'm saying? Right. You have a family. By the time you're 30, you more than likely have children. And you're just thinking about a lot more. You have more to lose. When you're that young, you really have nothing to lose. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the the idea of the the uh, it just you know it comes down to it's, there's so many issues where there's a group an ideology that says well the fix is just control and power and we legislate morality you can't legislate morality you just can't so right and wrong just because the law says it's right or wrong doesn't mean the person agrees with it. No matter what the topic of the law is. Right. So that's, you know, where you got your bad guys are going to get guns are going to and like they're not going to respect. And then you get places like, see, and I'm licensed to carry and I obey. So I know Walmart, I can open carry. They allow that. Mm -hmm. Well, then Texas. I know AGB only wants concealed carry. And that, you know, and I, you know, and I, and they post the two separate things, the two separate signs, yeah. only licensed people. And then uh, uh, Walmart, you can do both in, uh, basically. And HEB wants only concealed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I also went beyond that. To, and I went to their websites and checked mm -hmm. their, or Googled it and saw what their PR was mm -hmm. on it from their corporate. Right. Um, and, of course, I always, so when I, sometimes I'm open carrying with my nine. Because, mm -hmm. you know, she needs to breathe once in a while. So I bring <laughs> her out. Okay. So, uh, so, um, and when I go into HEB, I lock it up safely in my car and I just have the holster on when I go into HEB because I know they don't want that. Mm -hmm. You know, Walmart? No, I'm going in. Walmart don't get shit. And, and to, to say this too, when you, when you talk about these shootings, the biggest, my biggest thing, and this is the, the a shooting Mass shooting or a shooting only lasts as long as it takes for another gun to arrive. Mm -hmm. So I want people with guns around me because of that one individual. 
See, mm -hmm. and so we do. There are, and we do hear about the mass shootings. What, but if on my side, because I also carry a self defense insurance. And I pay for that annually. Mm -hmm. um, so I have full legal representation. I mean, God forbid I should ever have to use right. my weapon in defense. Yeah, not for me with that. Right. Themselves. So I carry that. And so I get all these things all the time in their literature and, their, and, their, and they have a, a news uh, magazine, uh, but digital. But what you never hear are the stories where a guy with a gun, a good guy with a gun, stopped a whole lot of fucking around. Someone wanted to fuck around and they found out. You know, and those are the stories that the mainstream media does never, ever. No, they don't. Ever I've shows. seen a few of them, but they they're like they're hidden. few and far yeah. between. They're yeah, hidden. and they're hidden. Yeah. You read a, if you read a newspaper, it's page three in the bottom. To be right. on the first page, right? Right. Yeah, they don't want it on the first page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's because of it. There is a. That's where the politics come in that you said in the mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. There's a narrative, and if it don't fit the narrative. And it's more, it's not, so where do you stop? And that's the problem now. Once you say you can't have this gun, where do you stop? Because eventually it's, well, this handgun's too big. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or now we don't want you having these bullets, mm -hmm. you know, versus in my, in my, just my handgun. I don't want you having self-defense bullets because they, they're, they stop the person mm -hmm. and, and they might die. Right. And, you know, I feel all of that. And however, if we, if I'm on the other end of, uh, and I forgot the name of the school in San Antonio, one of their parents, right there, they're saying, stop that shit because they lost a loved one to this mass shooting. So if I can get a chance to interview somebody with with a mass shooting that, that lost a loved one to that, mm -hmm. they're gonna to be totally against the weapons. Period. Not all you know? of them, because like the people in the in the Pulse Club in Florida, the gay club that was mm -hmm. shot up. There's a lot of them that became pro-gun after that shooting. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like that's the smarter instinct to have. Right. Right. They were like, no, I wish I had gone through, because they were Florida. They are allowed to have them too. Right. I wish I had gone through the process and learned to understand them and learn the stuff. So I had one on me that night. They couldn't take it in there if it's 51%. Well, you're right. They can't take you're it right. in there. But this bad guy don't care. So at 51%, they can still be so, licensed, but they can't. And then just to touch base before you finish that, on open carry, me, I would never fucking open carry. No? No. Because <laughs> you showing me what you got. Yeah. And I don't yeah, fucking take it me. from you. No, I understand. But I would never open. And then one last thing, I'll be forgetting shit. Hold on, like, when I worked, you know, I worked at Walmart part time while my to put my son through college. And this guy came in there with three fucking uh, guns. He had one on his hip. Mm -hmm. He had one across here and one behind his fucking back. All open carry. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, that, he to go to he go to Chicago to the wrong side. They gonna take all the motherfuckers from the take that line. <laughs> no, you know. He gonna walk out door and they gonna say, "Yeah, partner, give me that shit." So I'm, I'm gonna let you say, That's why I want open carry. I right. want to conceal. I don't want you to know what the fuck I got. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, because I, I, I'll be forgetting When I, I very rarely open carry, it's usually a, if I was out camping or something, of course you do, because it's yeah. more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But I very rarely open carry in the public. When I do, I'm so self-conscious about where I, how I stand in a line, because mm -hmm. you're not going to come behind me and get it. You're not. I'm not going to give you the opportunity. And the same thing, like, when I sit somewhere, I don't sit with my back to open space in a restaurant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I make sure I can see all entrances, mm -hmm. that door and that door too. I mean, that's how I choose the table, and that's an open carry. But you have to be, you have to be on purpose about yeah. that stuff and not slip, right? You know. Yeah. But I don't open carry. It's rare. I just do it once in a while. I say, ah, man, you know. Yeah, yeah. Put it on. And but I feel you. And I might only, I might never leave the house that day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find out I'm doing yard work and stuff. Yeah. You know, just. Yeah, and I feel you on that with the back turn, with this turn, with yeah. that turn. And when you walk out that door, there's that motherfucker with that AR right there. He cause he see you got. He saying, "Drop that shit." I understand. You know? It's like so showing. It's like showing, showing your hand. Yes. Yeah, sure. And I so he, you're that. the you're a threat. Yeah. And no. you need to be eliminated. Yeah. I get that so philosophy. That's, that's what that's, I'm saying. Yeah, I'll you tell you, think, uh, Josh. I mean, I feel how you feel, man. I, I like to keep it concealed because you don't want to give away that element of surprise. You know what I'm right. saying? Plus, you don't want people to be feeling uncomfortable around you. Mm -hmm. I mean, in some instances, it's okay because, like here, it's open carry, so it's like if you can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I usually keep it concealed because yeah. 
Well, shit, I'm black, so people are gonna be feeling uncomfortable with any goddamn way. I'm waiting on you to finish. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how they look at you. Like people see you come in with something, and they can see it. And it's like, oh my god, what is he gonna do? And it's like, really, the reason why I even got a gun is because of the mass shootings, yeah. right? It's like, okay, now all these bad people got guns, so why would I not have a gun to be able to protect? Yeah. The women, men, and children out there who don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want nobody to get shot down and they just in Walmart shopping. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have the ability to protect the people around mm -hmm. you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't think people think about that responsibility that they have with being able to even carry anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have a power to be able to not only protect yourself and your family, but other people's families as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and people really don't take that into consideration. Exactly. And, you know, on that note, uh, and it's strange, and it's possible. I don't know, and I don't have no numbers on it. But let's say it's a shooting going on right over there, and you pull out your shit and you shoot that motherfucker. Let's say you shoot him in the back because that was the best shot that you had mm -hmm. to stop all these other people. But he lived. That's when you need this insurance yeah. because that motherfucker turned around and sued you. Yeah, yeah, and he was killing people. And he was killing people. <laughs> he going to still yeah. go to jail or whatever, but he can still sue you. So I, I'm familiar with the insurance and stuff mm -hmm. that you have like that, the yearly thing like that and stuff. So, you know, but uh, let me just touch on one other thing. <laughs> That's just how stupid our system is, it's bro. It's fucked up. Yeah. You're killing somebody, but I can get sued for stopping you from, stopping killing, you from people. killing people. Oh, yeah. It's fucked up. That's nuts. So, you know, they're talking about in the news about the uh, domestic violence and not allowing people that's mm -hmm. uh, affiliated with it or whatever or have paperwork or documentation mm -hmm. to own a firearm. So what do y'all stand on that? So th th that law exists. It still violates that law exists. Right? No, that law exists. It, it's there's certain felonies yeah. that you lose right. your rights to bear arms. You lose them just like so a guy who did prison murder. He's not a felon. He's not allowed to own a gun no more. But they just like he's not allowed to vote gun. either. Yeah, he's not allowed to vote. Which right. I don't agree with that. Right. But uh, but still, he violated someone's civil rights by taking their life. Okay. Without their permission. Mm -hmm. So, in turn, he loses his civil rights. And that's that's uh, that's the way the law has been. So, there is, I know, every state I've ever lived in already says, if you have a felony domestic battery charge, mm -hmm. you lose your right to buy but a gun. Does that, I mean, is that still not violating his constitution, right? No. Because he, he made a decision mm -hmm. himself. To violate someone else's rights, he made a decision to break a law, uh, different laws. Okay. So um, I think, you know, to me is if you chose to violate your constitutional right, mm -hmm. he chose to make that, well, do that. I'm going to just, this is just my opinion on, y'all let me know if y'all get hot because I didn't even put the air on in this No, one. no, I'm not hot. But as far as the constitution goes, we all knew, knew, we all know that that shit wasn't written for black people or people mm -hmm. of color. It was written for White people, Caucasian people, but it it had they didn't even recognize black people. So why should I give a fuck about the Constitution or anything like that? Because I know that was back then. I don't even know if it's been revised because I ain't followed it, but I still it's still the original one, mm -hmm. you know. So why should I, as a black person, a person of color, give a shit about the Constitution? Did you have something to say? I mean, I really don't give a fuck about the government, so <laughs> yeah, I feel like all this shit is stupid as hell. None of this shit really works. It doesn't. When it comes to that, I feel where you come from, but none of this shit works for any of us anymore. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what color you are. The government isn't working for anybody. Or what party you are. Yeah. It right. just doesn't I'm, matter. It doesn't. So it's kind of like, man, we study following all this shit. More shit is getting taken away from us, and we're being abused more and more, and we're still following their agendas. I don't feel like anybody should be voting for any fucking body anymore. I feel like this whole system needs to be rebooted. Right. right. They need to get these motherfuckers out of here like we spoke on before. Some of these motherfucking They're people that's old. in the house is too goddamn old to be there. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, man, we living in a new age and all this shit is new. Why are they still able to make laws and shit from old times? Mm -hmm. Shit and, needs to be revised. And I say as far as the Constitution goes, hey, what verse on where it was written based just compared to where we are today, mm -hmm. well, let's just, today, everybody's included in it, no matter what the intent was when it was written. So mm -hmm. you say, uh, uh And the right to bear arms isn't the right to, it's there for the purpose of 
rebooting the government mm -hmm. if they become tyrannical. Mm -hmm. That's the purpose of that, it. Yeah, it well, is. And people come up with this, but they've got tanks. It doesn't. Have you seen, you watch people, uh, farmers pick up pitchforks in Ukraine. You watch other countries. History, statistically, uh, every government history that's ever been overthrown, it only took 10% of its population to rise up against it, and it was overthrown. Mm -hmm. And that those are statistical facts. So it doesn't matter what they have, mm -hmm. but it's if you have it. In fact, when I was young, I remember before they had, called him a president, whatever he was, the leader over China, I remember him saying the only reason nobody's ever landed on the shores of the United States and done a full frontal attack is because of that Second Amendment. Because they're not fighting just the military then. They're fighting the people. Yeah, because the people, all of them, even the bad guy's going to pick up their guns and be like, bullshit, I can fuck with this motherfucker, but you can't. And, you know, and that's mm -hmm. it. You know, you guys ain't going to come in here and take us over. And so that that's uh, that's why it, do, it should matter. The Second Amendment should matter for those very reasons. Right. I know you sound like you said that um, uh, it, it shouldn't matter then because what matters now or something to that effect well, well i'm saying it, 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 history always matters right and the intent behind it i'm just saying that we're at it we're at a place in society today where okay yeah when it was written you couldn't have but now you can mm -hmm. so do it mm -hmm. that's all i'm saying right got gotcha. you know okay. yeah i had to click because i think yeah. you knew where i'm yeah yeah i know where you were going yeah, yeah. yeah. So i just know it it, it matters and you know but uh throughout history not in its full totality but there's efforts of, or and and other people have said okay we this part we, as much as we can correct it we corrected it kind of a thing and and it's not, and not everybody, and not to the fullest extent it should be, right. nothing like that. But so, and that's what I'm saying. So because you can, now do it. Right. That's it, you know. All right, cool. You want to, uh, I forgot, you want to take us to a commercial? Oh, yeah, definitely, man. It's time for a commercial First break. Part. Man, we want to thank you all for joining us here at Wizzo Talks like you always do. I know you guys are loving us. Y'all always show up, and we appreciate that. But if you ask to take the time just to, you know what I'm saying, check out Wizzo Talks on all the platforms that he graciously blesses you all with, you know what I'm saying, TikTok, Instagram, you know, uh, even uh, Spotify, you know what I mean? Stop by, you listen to him while you're driving, you know what I mean? Just listen to the soothing sounds of his voice. He here to help everybody and give y'all wisdom, man. Thank y'all for that commercial break, man. Now back to our broadcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, damn chain. <laughs> we just do that shit kind of break lights. That's good. I like that. That's what's up, you know. So y'all, we're talking about assault weapons. Uh, but what I will ask you to do that, you know, I get a lot of comments by the viewers, and Josh can witness that. Mm -hmm. Once I upload some of these shorts on mm -hmm. TikTok and uh uh YouTube and whatever and stuff. So just if you get a chance, you probably have noticed some of them. Uh, maybe comment to the people because sometimes they address in the comments to something that you guys. Oh yeah, I never right. get back on and that. And so, talk yeah, something. I I, can, I don't have the answer to that. Right. So, but so if you get a chance, just check out the comments or whatever because people are always dropping comments and that's what we invite them to do. Mm -hmm. You know. So we're just talking about assault weapons. Uh, uh, we're not going to solve the problem. We're just kind of talking about it right yeah. here. Yeah. So. I think almost. We kind of haven't stayed specifically on assault weapons, so this just might be. Uh, uh, the weapons all together. Weapons all, yeah. What what you're feeling on owning weapons? I mean, right. it's just kind well, of a. To me, I kind of feel that I have been because I've been addressing the assault weapons, the and difference the, the of them, yeah, and stuff like versus. that. I hadn't been addressing the mm -hmm. nine millimeter or the three fifty. You're right. You're so right. So that's what I. So I feel that in my opinion that we have been on that. We're talking about the shooting, the right to carry, and stuff like that. Why do we carry. own them? Yeah. So, I mean, but everybody got their own different things. Sure. <laughs> this, the whole stigma with assault weapons is the fact just that you can shoot so fast. But, yeah. you know, if people actually watch anybody in shooting competitions, bro, you don't just need an assault weapon. Oh, I have no. seen a man get down with a lever action rifle. Yeah. Ping, 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 ping. yeah. I'm like, yo. Yeah. I didn't even know you could shoot that fast with those things. You know what I'm saying? One of the fastest shooters in the world and draws, too. Right. Fastest shooter in the world. And he uses a revolver. He only got six shots, right. but I, you know what? He makes all six of them count. But how old is he? 
Oh, he's a, he's an older gentleman. Okay, that's, yeah. what, that's yeah, where yeah, I was yeah. going with. I see yeah. the guy. I see you shoot with the lever action rifle. He was a young guy. He, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's about sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. He was a pee, 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 pee. I'm like, I didn't even bro. Which, grew which, up with it. In which, yeah. in which he would fall probably in that for certain small percent of like when we was talking about how we raised the kids right. and not shoot with this and not shoot that. And he's shooting for competition mm -hmm. probably. So right. his dad probably been training him for a while mm -hmm. on that shit like that. And he'd fall for the love of it. And that kid would probably never be a mass shooter. No, or, or what? Because he, he, like, you can like tell it's an art and it's a yeah. respect he has that for he has it. Because of the way he's probably been taught. The upbringing, maybe they taught him, like you said, no guns or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, it's really strange now to your head just have to be on a swivel, just like you were saying, if you're in the checkout line. Yeah. To see what's going mm -hmm. on. You need to be aware. of your surroundings, you mm -hmm. know. And this is my thing, too. You know, you got the, the, the cops where they say, if you see something, say something. You know what? I'm not going to get on that because that's getting totally way off, whatever, about these <laughs> fucking cops. But I'm not going to get on that. So, but I just say, man, we just, I mean, I, I I would like to see the numbers go down. When I Googled it the other day, uh, Illinois was at 57 mass shootings and Texas was at 50 oh. of the top 10. So, Illinois so was more than mass that. shootings. Right. You know, they qualify that as uh, four or more. Four or more, something like yeah. that. You know, four or yeah. more in a single event. Yeah. But I mean, I, you know, I sit here. Because, like I said, statistically, okay, mass shootings. And statistically, I mean, there's more deaths from the handguns, and that's where they start going. Well, now we got to protect those people too, and and they, well, they so they saw right. And one thing I want to hit on real quick. Yeah, go ahead. That a lot of people will bring up is I'll hear it. We well, you shouldn't be allowed to own automatic weapons. We're not. Mm -hmm. They're illegal. They've been illegal. Nobody sells an automatic weapon. And, and that's all I was just about to say about the, the handguns. Totally with the automatic. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, um, and that's the one that we need a lot. You need outlaw them. They already are. Yeah. <laughs> and there are a few people that have them as heirlooms. They were handed down to them. Mm -hmm. They have paperwork for that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to, you, we have to. Now, that's not to say that you can't. There's not these people out there that get it from underground arms dealers yeah, and whatnot. You know, yeah. They're going to yeah. always get it. But, you know, I don't know to the fact of the numbers that you're saying that it's more uh, and Josh, you know, you already know I'm a numbers guy. Yeah, number guy girl. <laughs> that uh, there's more with handguns than there are the so-called assault weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I there's mean, more deaths it, annually it, than, it, and it, you can look that FBI.gov. They yeah. put the numbers out every yeah. year. And it, and it may be, and I think the news media is posting the ones with these rifles because mm -hmm. maybe they were ones trying to push the rid of it. And like I say, I am not against no right. assault weapons. Or if that's what they call, because somebody gonna say they ain't what they fucking call. That's all I know to fucking call them. But <laughs> I'm just saying, if we can raise the age, then I know I already know it's gonna be some saying. Well, why raise the fucking age? You can't raise the age. They can raise the age to whatever they want to. Hey, yeah. you know, so, know. so it's so interesting because while we were speaking on these things, the two things that crossed my mind was you were saying raise the age, right? But what difference does that make when they can join the military and still at eighteen? The same? And we expect them to die for us, right? That's exactly you can you can join because you you're old enough to eighteen to go on about. I'm just saying because of the numbers showing that the mass shooting, so to speak, is from eighteen to twenty five. So yeah, you can join the military and go in there and shoot and kill for them and kill for them. But you can't come out here That's and purchase that weird. gun and then wind up killing a bunch of civilians. Civilians. But that we've had mass shootings on bases mm -hmm. from a soldier that kind of snapped. And what about yeah. the because uh, they got the PTSD and all that going on after they come yeah, back? Yeah, know what something. they've been through, over right? There, but, right. Yeah. So I mean, so we got so the vibe that I'm seeing is is there's a different vibe between mm -hmm. us in the raising the age or whatever, mm -hmm. and which is fine because you know everybody's not going to agree on everything. Right. So I can only speak for me for what I say and what I see. And I know you're saying if well if we stop this rifle. Then where does that stop them? They go want to ban this rifle and ban this gun and ban that mm -hmm. rifle and ban that. You know, so where does it stop? So what about the domestic abuse charges, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure there's people in the military who got domestic charges mm -hmm. and they still get to keep their guns and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, because you're talking on the uh, uh, that's if the if the domestic charge happened on the military installation. Mm -hmm. They're not being charged by the state nine out of ten times. I don't know. I'm assuming right. um, how that works. I don't know where the charge was carried and, and how they dealt with it. Um, I personally 
can't I'm not I, I don't want to speak into it for the right. fact that I've never been in the military. I don't I don't understand how right. it now, works. those were just questions that came to my mind. Right. I'm like, right. I'm like, Dave, this is just going for regular ordinary people. Now when you apply this to people with that's okay for them to kill people. Mm -hmm. Right. Then yeah. how does that work? Because you're killing and, for them. Right. You know, yeah. With that, some of these shootings too, if I recall, this last year was the situations where the child was in some form of therapy or something for a series of time, and they acquired the gun from the parents. Mm -hmm. They didn't go buy it mm -hmm. from where the parents are. And again, now that's an obligation of you already know your child may fight depression or may fight this. Those guns probably ought to be locked up in biometric safes right. where yeah, only your fingerprint, fingerprint can get it, you know. So do you think that if, and I asked this question in one of my other podcasts when I was in Dallas, uh, if uh, a kid gets your weapon, the parent weapon, mm -hmm. you know, should that parent FaceTime, go to jail, or do whatever from getting to this weapon that this they may have had secure or may not. Right. Still, the child didn't purchase it. They got your gun. Yeah, and went and so did what something. should happen to that parent because your child then went and took a bunch of other people's lives? So what should happen to that parent? Well, I mean, you both should go to jail, man. Hold the, hold the kid in juvie and take the, the parent to prison. Hold the kid in juvie till he get older. Yeah, and, go and then take the, and because the parent still should be able. To, the parent still has to take accountability because they didn't take the actions that were needed to even prevent it. They should right like that, and then uh, the, 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 I mean, and again, it was probably didn't raise the child. With it, they just own a gun. Okay, are we familiar with that? But what yeah. I, I'm just asking the question. Well, I I think I mean that. God, you know it. I think there's uh, that can get you. Yeah, that can become circumstantial. I think if it's a younger child, then yeah, the parents should be held accountable fully. But if it if it my 17 year old son makes a conscious decision to come in and and get I mean and he heads out the door with it. That ain't because... But he's still that, a minor. He's not going I don't, to I don't give a damn. But he's still he's a set, minor. But he knows right from wrong at that point. He's mm -hmm. an adult. I know Biblically, that. he's an adult. That happened at 12. But by law, they're saying that he is a minor. Right. So I'm saying it should a minor child, your child, just for example, not pointing mm -hmm. at you, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. should the parent receive time because your child got your gun and went and took somebody else's life. Your child, he's not grown, he or she is not grown until they're 18. No matter what common sense, no matter what else they have, by law, they're not grown until they're 18. So if they go out there and they kill up a bunch of people, should that parent go to jail too? I mean, if you want to be, if you want to be radical about it, man, this, and you want to alleviate all of it from happening in the future, this is what I say, man. You make the parent kill the child. <laughs> there you go. You know what I'm saying? It, it, the child got a gun. The child went out there. Took, took other people's lives. Right. Now other I got children it. from other parents. Now what your parents say when you was young? I brought you in this world. I'll take, take you out. out. Yeah. Okay. So now you didn't went out there and you didn't did something else. I'm your creator. Now I got See, a I That's got the a most common sense thing okay. that I've heard. So, now I can jump <laughs> on board with that one. So you jump on board with that one, but still you don't think that the parents should go. Not I said that. I believe it's circumstantial because I don't believe I should, a parent should go to jail for a, a damn a, a kid who's already that can technically he could move out if he wanted to. Yeah, right. right. Okay. At he, that point, you right. know, shit. Right. My dad, I was kicked out at fifteen once because I didn't right. want to do dishes. Right. Yeah. Hey, I know some kids that was kicked out at thirteen, right. man. Right. right. And, and but I, I, you know, we manned up. Right. And I hear what you were saying about taking. You know, you brought me. You could take them out, and then once you do that, of course, now you go into jail. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? it should be a it should, it be, should a be a rule, right? Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. like uh, mutual yeah. combat. A lot of people right. don't know about that, though. Yeah, no. you know what no. I'm saying. And that is a lot. That's you a, can do that right? stuff. Yeah. You yeah. can do that. Well, so it's kind of like, man, your child is out there doing some crazy stuff, and if I'm gonna be held responsible for said child, why not, man? Yeah, you got to go. Right. <laughs> they not going there's no coming back from that. You already went out there and murdered all these people. Mm -hmm. So now you have to atone, and as a person who has created you. I got to do what's right, man. Right. Well, Mia, and just to go back to that question that I was asking you about, you know, you were saying that you feel that, you know, it's certain, you know, different situations or whatever. If that kid, kid is not grown yet and they come, they, they know the law, they've been taught, or they don't know the law, but they've been taught by you about the raising the weapon and all that, and they wind up taking someone else's life mm -hmm. because the parent 
didn't secure that weapon enough, then I think the parents should take the ass to jail. Well, now you got a whole other problem. Yeah. You're, my door is getting kicked in. Yeah. What good is a secured, unarmed weapon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's my I, ass now I, I to protect my home. So th there's two that, sides too. to that, too. I understand all that. So you know? when they come in and they kick your house, kick your door in, then that's another whole can of uh, whoop ass. Yeah, and, and, you know? and, and, and if I can't, they're coming in and then they got it, they're already holding the gun and I've got to hold up a minute. Mm -hmm. Let me get my gun unlocked. Yep. Let me arm it. I yeah. Let me load it. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. So you've yeah. got that whole side thing. Like, yeah. you know, so I grew, I grew up with them throughout the house. I yeah. knew not to fuck with them. Yeah. But different cases, different than that. You, <laughs> see, now, you, you got, you're saying that they coming in and they kick your door in, which nine times 10 going to happen at night. Right. And while you're gone, that kid then got sent home and suspended from school and find your weapon during the day. At nighttime, yeah, you keep your gun unloaded, whatever. So it, yeah. it depends on how you handle it and how you it's, take care of your Again, firearm. situational, you know, man. It's situational, but for, still. For how you secure kid, it and when. If, yeah, at nighttime, that's different because he's not coming or she, because I don't want to be saying he too mm -hmm. much. And people get pissed because I'm saying he. It's figure speak. But if, if that kid comes in there at nighttime, they're not going to take your weapon. So, yeah, you can get it unlocked in, because normally if anything's breaking in, it's during the night. Right. Set it like, on your nightstand. You know, I see what you're during saying. During the day, during the daytime, you're gone. Your weapon don't need to be on the fucking nightstand. Right. Or kids will find it. Mm -hmm. So I'll, That's I'll true. Say, but I just still believe that, you know, and, and I can be wrong too. And I may have a change of mind and then I've raised my kids differently. And they never saw any of my guns when they were coming up or whatever. They never saw it, knew mm -hmm. that I didn't fucking have one. But yeah. everybody's that, not doing that's that. That's true. Just, just leave it out there. Then, yeah, it's so. who's liable? Yeah. A parent, loaded gun. Because we, we, I said, so hear those news stories too. Yeah. Where the four year old toddler or whatever grabs it. Yeah. You Shoots know? It yeah. Because yeah. you know, the person left yeah. it lying out there. I mean, so yeah, make, yeah. you know. So it's a case going on, and I've lost track with it where. One of the kids, or I say kids, but they was under 17 or under 18 or whatever, then shot someone and now they're charging the parents mm -hmm. for taking that person's, that kid's mm -hmm. life. And me, on the other end, as you didn't shot, I want all the motherfuckers dead. I want the mama dead, the daddy dead, his daddy, his mama, because right. they didn't took my baby. That's the right. fear and the anger that I'll be going through right then. Right. Kill all of them son of bitches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you on that other end, you didn't lost them. You're not, fuck the law. If you can get to your goddamn gun, you finna shoot up the motherfucker. So what if they kill me? Especially if that was your last child, your yeah, right. only child. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then, you know, so you know, we can go on and it's so much, you know, scenarios. so many different scenarios mm -hmm. about it, you know. But I think talking about it, you know, and bringing our kids up, it may not be to take the video games. It may be to show them like you was talking about raising them with the no guns at the end mm -hmm. or whatever. But I still say. You know, we still have to trust them to go over here and do the right thing. Right. When peer pressure is a motherfucker. When they are right. around that group of kids and your kid, the one that's doing right. Peer pressure can be a big <coughs> if they give in. There is, but I don't know. And there's a 12 year old boy that got home from school and some and a guy was trying to break in his place. Mm -hmm. He was raised how to use it. Knew where yeah. it was. Yeah. Got it. Shot yeah. the guy. Shot at the guy through the door, and they got the guy. They arrested him. He didn't kill the guy, mm -hmm. but he, they were trying to kick his door, and he's the only one home. It's some southern state, and that wasn't too long ago. You so know about the information that you put yeah. in? Did you instill in the children, man? Yeah. And I think a, a lot of the stuff that um, when it comes along with these video games or any type of simulation, when it comes to killing this. If you're going to let your child play that, then you need to instill in them the value of life. Mm -hmm. What does it right. really mean to take a life? You know what I'm saying? How, what is a life worth? What does it mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? People don't give them their children this type of wisdom. Right. We just put them out there in the world and then we allow the, the world to teach them or... You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. teachers, and it's like these are these people may not have may not be in the right mind frame to give your child that type of wisdom. You know what right. I mean? To keep them safe like that, spiritually. And you mentally. can go on social media and watch all these young men and women just knocking senior citizens out, just punching people, jumping them, and, and they film it now. And so that, that to yeah, that, I mean, that's a who. 
where are the parents of that child? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know. I think now I'm gonna say now I raised uh, my kids. You know, they they wasn't raised around any roaches. They don't deal with that shit. They was raised to go to school. They was raised, you know, right, correctly to do this and do that. They they know how to keep things clean and straight. My daughter is 24. My son is 26, the youngest two. The oldest 38, somewhere in the motherfuckers. But my point is, they was raised nicely, neatly, perfect. Wash your hands when you go to the restroom. Do this when you do that. I mean, raise the motherfuckers to the T. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It's one or two of them motherfuckers that ain't doing that shit. They go to their kids right there and wash their goddamn hands. Yeah. But my point is, I raised them. Mm -hmm. But now they on their own. They're grown, and now they're doing differently. Right. You know, but they were taught. They they wasn't... My, my daughter moved into an apartment here last month, saw a roach. She was on the goddamn phone with the housing people over there because she, she wasn't raised with that shit. Right. You know, we never had that. So we taught them to clean this, clean that. You know, black people pour a little bleach water in there when they wash dishes and shit like that, you know. But we can raise them all we want. But it's still out there. I used to tell my kids, I don't give a shit if you cuss. Just don't do it around the wrong people. Mm -hmm. You know why I told them that? And they was they were young. Mm -hmm. because they, they, well, yes, that, but this kid on the bus over here, their parents wasn't raising them, what the fuck, mm -hmm. was cussing like a like a sailor. Yeah. So I wanted my kids to cuss that motherfucker out too. Because I knew they knew how. I knew they knew the word. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't want them to do it in front of grown people. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so but you know, but they was raised not to do that and respect grown people. But my point is, you know, that one over there is not raised like that. So I yeah. don't mind to be able to retaliate and, and be able to cuss that motherfucker out too. Right. But Yeah, you, know, you get you know, I mean you, you instill and you hope. Yeah. That they choose to choose to to make the right choice once you sent them off on your own. I mean, again, there's a you hope, and then you hope as they go through, they do their younger adult years of screw that, I'm doing this my way, and then they're fucking up. That they wow, it really it, what I know, what's instilled in me, and, and they come back to that. Yeah. They come back to that. Yeah. That's what you hope. Yeah, and that's powerful in itself, though. Yeah. Because yeah. when you yeah. when you when you do go through that rebellious stage, and then you be like, "This is the reason why," and that's and I find that to be a a lot of problems when uh, we in the rebellious stage, we fight our parents, and then when we become parents, we start to understand why. Right. It was applied to us. Where it was. Right. Well, we're approaching our hour mark. I only like to run the podcast about an hour, but at the end, I like to give everybody a chance to. Say anything closing out. So you got anything you like to kind of close out with? The yeah. People out there. Um, if you're totally against guns, and 100 percent, or they scare you, I just encourage you to reach out to a place that has, like, uh, what they call what when I was in Arizona, the gun stores and everything offered a, a called a first shooters course. Mm -hmm. And they just teach you uh, basic fundamentals of holding a weapon properly, how not to. Um, and also, it usually culminates and ends with you getting to fire about 10 rounds at their range okay. so that you can feel it. You don't have to go buy a gun to do this, but they have first shooters courses, and it's a good thing to take. Just learn more about it rather than just take narratives that are thrown out to you, be it whether it's the news or on social media, because um, they're not uh, guns. You know, that saying guns don't kill people, people kill people. Right. So uh, you don't need a gun to do it either. I mean, they 100 percent outlawed in uh, Australia. They're 100 percent outlawed in the UK and Great Britain. 100 percent. Australia bought them all back. It cost them six hundred billion dollars to do that. Mm. And their crime is 75 percent higher now mm. since they've done it. Since they so bought them back. since they bought them back and Venezuela has no guns look where they're at the Venezuelans guns were taken so you you just got to uh don't you know don't re believe just because it's a narrative being thrown out you know do your own research right. educate yourself on them and I do encourage everyone to at least take a first shooter's cause doesn't mean you ever have to like them or buy right. one mm -hmm. right. just come to understand uh them and and you know they, then they're not so scary Maybe, maybe it'll, if it's something that you're just totally in fear over. 
Right. You know. And just to say this for Josh, for you, for you close out with something on those countries that you just named. We're not sure. Or I'm not sure what their constitution is. Because I know theirs are not falling up under ours. No, no. Nobody so, has ours. Ours right. is an yeah, experiment that's what I'm saying. on paper. So, <laughs> right. So that's what I'm saying. So, you know, if, if they were to try to take the guns here in the U.S., it will be another fucking January 6th thing or biggest shit. January 6th. Or whatever yeah, it'll it be so, 1776 uh, yeah. thing is what it'll but, be. <laughs> what I'm saying is because, of, you know, our constitution with everybody right to bear ones or whatever. And so those other countries that you just named, Australia, for example, Taking all the guns, yeah. they're not going to take the guns here in the U.S. They're no, no, no. The cost of what we have, have so they war, may not yeah. have that, so they can do that. That's why all I was. Yeah, saying. they, yeah, they did. I mean, at one point, their citizens did own it, and they decided we want to do a buyback because yeah. of shootings. We yeah. want to do a buyback program, yeah, totally. but they were allowed to. They didn't have to legislate it. You're right. Yeah, they were just going. This is what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Justice. Josh, what you got over there for us? Man, uh, well, I, I truly, I truly think that um, people need to really understand the uh, value and the importance of being able to handle themselves around tools. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand what these tools are. There are many tools that are way more dangerous than guns. Money, for instance. You know what I'm saying? You can pay somebody to go kill somebody else. <laughs> you don't even have to pull the trigger yourself. But we just need to understand these tools that we're using and we have to have a greater respect for them. And we also need to have more of a respect and we need to be more aware of the people's mental health around us and our own mental health. Yeah. Because... Like we discussed earlier, um, these these tools aren't the dangerous things. It's the people who are using these tools and their intentions. And we just need to be aware of all this that's going on around us, man. And, and like my man said, man, don't sit with your back to the door and pay attention to your surroundings. <laughs> yeah. You know, those are very those those are life key points. Have an escape plan. Right. Always. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not just for yourself, but for the people around you. Yeah. The and, bar, the club. Right. And you truly need to understand the importance of having these tools, not just for yourself, but to protect your community and other people's loved ones as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Well said. Well said. Guys, I'm going to thank both of y'all guys for coming on. It's you know, I appreciate it. You know, we have another one. You've been on once. One, this is your second time. This is my second talk. one, yeah. Right. Appreciate you coming back. I ain't going to say because this guy here, he'd have been on so many days. Yeah, times. I, was, I, was, I, was, I almost thought you signed a co host. <laughs> <laughs> I start watching something. Because he's always ready to come on here to drop a dime and share some knowledge and some wisdom with us. And, and I appreciate you guys for coming on. Uh, to uh, all of the viewers out there watching, if you guys have any comments, Please drop them up in the comments for us. I think I said that wrong. I don't fucking know. Anyway. Is that all right? Is that all right? We're going to roll with it. So, uh, you know, it's uncut and unedited. So, you guys just drop some comments and uh, maybe these guys will see them or I'll reply to them or something like that. Uh, the mass shooting topics, so to speak, to that person that's out there probably saying that's not the way it's what it's called. I don't fucking know. You know what I'm talking about. Again, once again, this is your boy Paul Wizzo. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'll let you boy.